Um, thanks, everybody, for the uh, opportunity today to talk about, um, I suppose, our experience um, from CERTI, um, from Federation University, around grains related trial research. So I just I'd like to acknowledge there's, there's quite a few who have contributed to this work. Um, and I'll, I'll get to a few other bits and pieces as I go. Um, just a preface to today's presentation. So as stated, I uh, work at the Centre for Research and Digital Innovation at Federation Uni. The presentation is largely based on what was a proposed data quality framework. So I worked on this in 2017, 2018. Um, elements of that have been implemented since with what we've been doing with online farm trials. So I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that. Um, but just also say that with, with those data quality improvements, there's been a lot of internal investigation and understanding the data but also we have an expert advisory group which has representa uh, representatives of the Australian grains industry, including the Grains Research and Development Corporation, GRDC. Um, they've been really important in helping us um, and, and to say that it's a, it's a true collaboration and partnership between GRDC um, and CERTI. OFT started in 2013-14, um, so we've been working at it for a little while now. In, in terms of online farm trials purpose, and, and thank John Rivers for this um, to help provide some guidance. Now, OFT really is around providing enduring profitability for the Australian grains industry, um, especially growers. Um, that's, that, that's a key sentiment um, of GRDC and, and their reason for being. So it's around accelerating grower adoption of DNA trial findings. So by providing access to that supporting data and information and acting as a resource for DNA investors and, and providers. So looking at some of those gaps, you know, how the system can be used as a, as a tool for gap analysis. So things like metadata assessments or meta analysis on a particular agricultural issue or theme, helping to connect growers with grower groups and other members of the agricultural industry and, and thirdly, avoiding duplication of work. So a lot of, there's a lot of grains trials research that has been done in Australia. So just a little bit of a caveat. So probably the views I'm gonna to express today are more from an online farm trial perspective and, and what we've found rather than the whole grains research space. It, it's, a, it's an enormous space and, and I'll probably allude to that a few times during the presentation. So there's just a little caveat there. In terms of grains research in Australia, there's a rich history, you know, over 150 years we've been putting in trials, but there's a lot of different organisations who have been undertaking that trial research. A lot of that stemmed originally with growers and, and, and government playing a role there pretty strongly but we've seen more over the last sort of three to four decades, grower groups who represent growers of, of like minds in particular regions or areas of Australia. Um, universities have played a really strong role um, in, in linking and, and, and especially around the research aspects of, of grains. But we're also mindful there's a lot of co corporate and commercial entities um, and, and private partners that are doing research trials and experiments. And lastly, we can't forget the growers. The growers are always doing experiments, um, even their own paddocks, strip trials, all of these different types of things to improve their yield. However, it, it's probably fair to say that a lot of the trials remain in the dark, um, undiscovered and lost to current and future generations. And as one leading agronomist in, in New South Wales said, said a couple of years ago that, you know, we're effectively going through the third wave of repeating the same research trials um, and that was in his career so it just goes to show that um, that potential duplication or repeating of research is, is something to be mindful of. In terms of grains research trial out there this was from an external audit back in 2017-18 you know literally 
there's millions of, of grain trials out there. Um, but probably you, it'd be fair to say, while some of the research findings are out there and more accessible, a lot of the data and underpinning information aren't necessarily there and easily used for other purposes. So quite a, a variety of different organisations have been undertaking research trials in Australia. In terms of what is online farm trials, it's it had its beginnings in 2013-14, as alluded to at the start, with three initial contributors of trial research data into the system. The focus of the system was really to make trial data information discoverable. That was bringing that research data and information out of the dark and into the light. So findable and accessible to the grains community. And currently there are over 80 contributing organisations to online farm trials with thousands of those trials publicly, publicly accessible and, av and av available in the one location. So the key, key drivers there around online farm trials is access, share, view, searching, referring to other data and comparing results. It just sort of some of the key functions of the system, which I won't delve into. There's a lot of different grain and crop types in the system. So we have a lot of cereals, forages, oil seeds, pastures and pulses. So there's a lot of different grain production systems and, and crop types across Australia from Western Australia, across across the southern areas of Australia, South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania, and then up through the north in New South Wales and Queensland. And that just, this the numbers here are a little bit outdated, but just gives you an idea of some of the number um, trials that we have in OFT. When looking at some of the legacy data, um, at, at the very start saying that, you know, we, we've been doing trials for you know, 150 years. There's the ability to bring some of that data forward um, and, and look at how things have evolved through time. So this is a, an example published in the um, Victorian Agricultural Report for 1884, um, a research trial at Dookie. So where they were able to test 24 different wheat varieties um, and see how they performed in terms of yield. What we can do is take some of that, that information that's often often captured in, in hard reports or potentially PDF documents, now bring that into the light, so to speak, um, and now use that data information to look at different trends and, and how varieties, um, breeding programs, et cetera, have changed through time. So this is just an example of taking that data from that particular report, bringing it into OFT, and then enabling people to use that in, in a free and accessible manner. In terms of data quality advances in, in the platform over the last three and a half years, just quickly summarise these. Um, what we've tried to focus on is increasing minimum mandatory fields for trial data sets for inclusion in the system. I suppose what's a little bit tricky there is sometimes it's a bit of a balancing act because we've got such a diversity of contributing organisations from universities and highly resourced um, organisations through to smaller grower groups or, or potentially even individuals um, who, who don't necessarily have that level of administrative support and, and data type systems and management to help them to share some of this data and information. Other things are around trial statistical parameters and, and the design of particular trials, there's been a lot of evolution in that um, over the last 80 to 90 years. Um, so we looked at things to enable people to do searches and filters on things like whether the trial is replicated, randomised or blocked. Um, you've always balancing the acts around dealing with legacy trials, but also trials that have been done in the past, but also trials already in the system and their level of data entry, you know, were they completely populated for all these fields or were bits and pieces missing? And then you've got new trials where you're trying to maintain a base level of metadata um, and also data quality. The crop types, which we've just briefly 
shown before, there's there's quite a diversity of trials with different crop types. So sometimes crop um, trials reported against one crop type, but in matter of fact, there might have been numerous different crop types undertaken in that particular trial. So we've had to update that. Trial type, so there are what's called demonstration trials, which are sometimes strip trials or might be whole paddocks that they that growers or researchers look at um, yield or different crop behaviour. Um, there's a lot more work around precision agriculture, which probably over the last three decades, we've seen that become um, more uptaken by growers. Um, and, and the mainstay is experimental trials. Um, a recent upgrade is looking at authorship and, and, research, and researcher IDs. So there we're looking at standardisation of, of researchers and linking that to ORCID IDs and researcher IDs. Other parts is around trial warnings. So uh, a lot of agronomic trials, there's, there's potential risks, you know, climate or pests or all different things that can go wrong, put out the wrong chemical. So we had to also include in the system trial warnings when things didn't go quite right just so then people who are using the trial and the data that's behind it know that there's other factors to consider. Some published trials in the system, so we're trying to work with contributing organisations to make as much of their trial data and information accessible. Been doing a lot of work on, on standardisation of measurement types, so a lot of different observations and measurements around grains trials research. So we've been doing a lot of work there to consolidate um, and align those with standard vocabs. That's, that's pieces we're looking at going forwards. And contributors, you know, about a, a particular report was published, but it, it might be in a grower group magazine or some other source, but actually the researchers were affiliated with a different organisation. So we've had to actually look at ways to make sure that people have permission to share and publish that information online. But just to also emphasize that there's been a, quite an evolution in, in trials. So this is just an example to actually say a, a lot more rigor in the statistical design and implementation of trials over the last three decades in particular. So what, what we're finding was that a lot of the legacy trials didn't quite have that level of detail um, and, and requirement, but that that need is, is evolving. So we've had to implement new changes in terms of the, the tagging of trials with those key things around trial replication, randomization and blocking, um, standard sort of experimental design type features. And, and just to touch on, here's an example of where a trial has been tagged with an unusual adverse event. Um, just so that people are aware with the data that's in the system um, that it could be impacted in, in some capacity. In terms of trial data and information in the system, um, a, a, the main things that we tend to capture are around project details, so some of the what we're calling project metadata. Um, we also capture information about the, the trial methods um, and how it was implemented might be the types of machinery, how big was the particular trial in terms of its dimensions, whether it had a number of replicates, etc. Um, trial results, so often whether uh, the particular data that was in that trial, the, the sort of summary results of that particular trial, whether that includes some key statistical parameters, um, but mainly around the measurements that I, I discussed earlier. Um, in terms of soil Data, we also access other soil data sources, such as a Soil and Landscape Grid of Australia. So we're able to have that as accessory information to accompany trials. Likewise with climate, um, what we access is some of the silo weather um, station data. So we're actually able to have climate data from nearest weather station, etc., depending upon where that trial is located. Um, so that information can be accessed and help provide context to the trial for that particular year. Key thing also is around the trial report and attachments. So a lot of PDF, these are all PDF documents um, that are attached to the trial. And we also provide linkages for that particular trial and crop type and, and measurements, etc., to other GRDC final reports through their systems. So 
um, that enables people using the system to link to those other resources. Another key part we've been focusing on is with, with GRDC support is the terms and terms of contribution. So really important around um, making sure that trial metadata, so it's details about the trial was open. So um, GRDC been really um, strong supporters are about this freedom to operate. So um, trying to make better use of these trials and the data for future purposes. So what we've done as part of this is ask organisations to contribute their trials under uh, fair terms. Um, so those new terms and conditions um, are CC by four. Um, that's, that's been a big change in the last 12 months. In terms of actually what was initially proposed in, in 2018 um, for OFT, um, had sort of set out five ideals um, in terms of a, a workflow. So begun with the data quality framework at phase one to, to try and tease that out, look at a quality rating scheme, then apply that scheme to all the trials in OFT. The fourth bit was about supporting trial contributors to improve their data quality management. Um, and, and lastly, it was about conveying to users how to use that ratings for their decisions and, and how the data can be um, provisioned. So a lot of it stems from some impact research that was done in 20, led by Angela Murphy in 2016. Um, we were really flagged that trials without some sort of quality rating um, would often mean that people would assume that the trials were all according to the latest standardised scientific approaches and techniques. And we know that's, that's not the case. So there was those assumptions that were incorrect as a consequence and that everything was equally equal across the system, um, regardless of who did the trial and when it was done, et cetera. So we needed an approach to um, provide a bit more transparency about trial data quality in the system. So the thoughts were around a data quality framework and, and GRDC actually really pushed this um, back in 2017 about enabling the sharing of information and data as, as a focus of, of, of grains um, funded research across Australia. So it, the focus from that was about how do we increase those research outcomes and discoveries of approved data um, and how could we apply standards and protocols. Also wanted to look at how we could support organisations to adapt to these latest um, applications and, and, and technology developments, really with a, a longer term interoperability goal. And, and then actually thinking also, well, how do we adapt some of these data quality principles and, and perhaps they might be relevant to other parts of, of the grains industry per se. And, and finally, it's, it's really about improved grower support. So quality, quality data from trials provides advisors and users of this data and information with, with better, strategically better decisions and, and, and options. In terms of having a look at um, data quality aspects, sort of went through the literature and, and looked at all the different terms, phrases, definitions um, of what, what is data quality. So there was quite a few publications that had different elements of, of data quality um, and just was having a look at what, what things fit best in terms of what we were trying to achieve with online farm trials. So as an approach, um, proposed approach, um, we decided to run with the ABS data quality framework. Um, mainly because it was at strong linkages with standards for assessing and reporting on statistics. Um, that, was, that was a key part that drove it in that direction. Um, and that aligns with a lot of the research trials and, and experiments. But thinking also about how do you present that to users? Um, so I really like the ALA um, approach to data quality. Um, to make it as simple as possible for users to understand and interpret. We're also very mindful though in the approach that um, the data and information has been contributed to the system by organisations. So how do we manage that in a way to preserve that 
but also make sure that we provide data in a in a harmonised and consistent manner. So the integrity of that contributed data is, is you know, was at the forefront of our thinking with the with that approach. In terms of quality assessment reporting, you know, we considered different ways, um, different techniques, whether it was a questionnaire or tool. So you could use some form of self-assessment, um, which happens with a lot of different parts of ag industries. Um, and that could include a range of experts or tools to support that. We could use metrics, which are, include filters around data quality. So talking about within, between, between records, tables, etc. cetera. Um, or it might be around system automation and reporting, different potential approaches. So in terms of an approach that came up with, um, we looked at those seven data quality dimensions um, and essentially worked out five potential questions for each dimension. So those dimensions were institutional environment, relevance, timeliness, Accuracy, coherence, interpretability, and accessibility. So, in a nutshell, came up with a, a total scoring scheme out of 35. Um, so, it, for each question, it was a yes or, or no. Um, yes equals one, X equals zero. So, the maximum score of five for each, so five by seven. And as an example, um, Institutional environment is one of those really tricky ones because of such a diversity of contributing organisations. Um, thinking about the yeses on the left with the contributor, um, as an example, um, does a contributor to OFT publishing this data, um, are they the recognised custodian versus no, the contributor to OFT is not the data custodian. So just set out some questions to help with that with that appraisal of, of quality and this is just an example for institutional environment I won't show the other components but just to give you a feel of the yes no type questions that we're thinking about in, in the framework and thinking about how you might present that um, so here's an example a trial data quality statement so um, we have a lot of people want to know core things around trial title or project, who contributed it, um, aims and messages, the key fields that um, people accessing OFT look for, and then having a, a data quality rating. Um, and in this particular one, um, it came up with an overall rating of four. It's just an example. It's um, nothing definitive. And thinking about a range of different data quality tests, again, this sort of links off some of the rationale and what's been set out with ALA about things passing or not passing or alerting potential users to issues with trials. Um, and thinking even about also how you present that in a simplified form. So this is what was a proposed trial project record where you have a number of data quality tests, again, based largely on, on the ALA example where there's been two that have failed, eight are questionable, uh, ADA, caution, 59 ticked, um, et cetera. So, and looking for other things that people, uh, when they're, especially in grains trials research, things like trial classification and plot design, um, a, a common common data interest in, in trials in OF2. Um, and behind that is this range of data quality tests. So, while we have a rating system, this is a range of data quality tests sitting behind it. So I think in total there was there was over 70 data quality tests that could be run. Um, but this, as I say, this this was proposed um, and thinking about how those data quality tests could be implemented within the system. And again, just just then how some of this information might be presented. Um, in a, in, a, in a clean and um, curated form to users of trials. So just some finishing bits is thinking about next steps. The idea was to actually have, take the theoretical to a technical impl implementation. Um, while there are bits we have done um, with GRDC to improve OFT, they've been perhaps not the entire framework in its own right. One area we're looking at was um, active trial management. So 
what I mean by active trial management is helping to work with organisations conducting trials to have a lot of those data quality principles embedded at the very start before something is in the ground growing or they're looking for an effect of a particular thing. So the idea was to actually, rather than looking at a, at a cure, was actually thinking, well, hang on, um, let's actually get in on the ground floor and work with organisations before we have to do a lot of data wrangling. A key part also is around how we guide and support organisations, um, given there's got such a diversity of, of skills in this space in data management. Um, and we found this right across Australia through other projects and soil CRC, other programs. Um, that's, that's a really big issue, but also conveying to users the benefits of, of a data quality framework is, is something that um, we've still got to work on. In terms of experience and learning, um, you know, there's a, there's a plethora of open access data um, relevant to agriculture and grains, um, and we're accessing some of that, but there's still a lot more that can be linked in. Uh, understanding the, the terms and conditions is critical, you know, about contributing in data, how it's used. Um, not a lot of people, unfortunately, I think, you know, think about the qualities of the data. I think that's sort of an afterthought. Um, and the support of domain experts around the data wrangling, sharing, metadata is something we're still working closely with GRDC on it and the services that come out from it. So that all those different components of data management, ownership, custodianship, sharing, access, governance, metadata, licensing, quality, they're, they're complex issues. There's, there's no straight highway to deal with that. It, it's always different for every organisation. Um, and individuals operating in ag research data. Um, and, and without, um, you know, with GRDC, I think, you know, it's, it's fair to say that they recognise this isn't a straight solution, but they're really trying to support the industry um, through initiatives in statistics, data management and access. So um, great that they're here today. Um, you know, just a question, is the data quality solution, is, is it the carrot or the stick? Um, I'm not, I still don't know the answer to that, um, but we're really from an OFT and a CERTI point of view, and I, I think from a GRDC point of view, um, really focused on, on making the data fair. That's, that's a, a, a real driver for us at the moment. So I'll finish up there.